Hello, this is part two for the video CR chart, unexpected trade issues and solutions. In today's video, we're going to be looking at submitting a test order and viewing orders in the trade orders window. Then we're going to look at using the web-based trading panel with the Teton order routing service. And then finally, we're going to go over how to look at your margin requirement in your account and how to keep track of margin requirements for each symbol that you can trade. Now for this next example, I'm going to go into live trading mode. So I will turn off trade simulation mode. Keep in mind, when you first submit an order in Sierra chart, you will get an order confirmation. Now we do not recommend turning off order confirmations, but in this case, I have turned them off because when I submit a new order, the order just gets submitted. There's no confirmation that appears. But by default, there will be an order confirmation window that appears before you submit the order, and you will have to turn that off in the trade window. When beginning live trading for the first time, you should enter a test order on your symbol that you want to trade. So in this case, the symbol of my chart is set to ESH23, but the trading symbol or the trade only symbol is set to MESH. So if I go to the chart settings, I'll show you that really quickly here. The symbol is ES and the trade symbol is MES. And then I have use as trade only symbol set to yes. So when I submit an order on this chart, the order is actually being submitted to this symbol, not this one, which is important if you do plan to trade this micro product or any micro product. The first thing you should do is submit a test order. So that's what I will do. I'm in live trading mode right now. So you will submit a buy limit order below the current price because you don't want it to get filled. So I scrolled down the price scale and now I will put an order here. If you wanna see what these orders look like and their timestamps and all of that, you can select trade and then trade orders window. And the trade orders window will give you information about your orders, including the order IDs, if they're server side orders and uh, their order types and all of that. This is a useful window to see the active orders in your account. You could configure this window to show only working orders or to show orders that had been canceled or filled. So if I uncheck this box here, you will now see a lot of canceled orders here and previous orders that we had placed and canceled. And you'll also see the open orders here at the bottom. But I keep this set to show only working orders just to um, keep that consistent, just to make sure that uh, I'm aware of whenever there are open orders in my trading account. If you select cancel here, um, and then select yes to confirm to cancel. Nothing will happen because we didn't actually select any order to cancel. You actually have to click on an order to select it. So if I select, for example, the parent order in this case, which is this one, and then I select cancel, you can see now it's confirming to cancel this order with the order ID here, 221900, which is that one. So when I select yes here, it will cancel that order. And if you saw very briefly, the order was canceled immediately off of the chart and it took about a second or so to disappear from the trade orders window. Um, that is because I'm using a fast chart update interval on my chart and uh, the trade orders window potentially has a slower update interval by default. So when you're, when you're getting used to live trading, you want to submit test orders like I just previously showed you. So for a sell order, you would go above the current price and you would submit a sell limit order above the current price like that. Now there is another video you can reference which is called Sierra Chart Trading Interface. And this video shows some of the different methods you can use to submit orders. So there is a web-based trading panel that you can use as a fail safe in the case that you lose client side connectivity or internet connectivity on your system, or if you have a hardware failure you can connect to this web-based trading panel potentially on a mobile device that has its own internet connectivity, uh, data or something. You can flatten positions very easily using this web-based trading panel. Okay, so I'm logged into my Sierra Chart account on my mobile device right now, and I'm on the account control panel page. I'm gonna scroll down here until I find the web trade account data and order entry. Now, you will need to provide your password on this page another time, even if you are already logged in. So I'm gonna do that now. Now you will get three different options in the service selector. If you're live trading, it's important that you select the last option, which is the trade account data and order entry for the Sierra Chart CME direct order routing. So I will select that one in this case. 
you will then have to select the clearing firm for which your account is with. In my case, it's with Iron Beam, so I'll select that. So now that I've selected the clearing firm that my account is with, we can see some information here regarding the connection status. So we can see that we are connected to the trading server and we are also connected to the data server. Now I'm gonna show you an example of how you can flatten a position or cancel an order here on this panel. So when you scroll down, you get an order entry window. Now, if you scroll down further, you will see any active open orders or current positions here. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll to a high up price in this case, and I'm going to submit a sell limit order. Now, as soon as I click the mouse, you will see these orders appear here in the web-based trading panel. And I am connected here on my mobile device. So I did submit the sell order and the orders populated themselves immediately there. We did not even have to refresh the page. And now with these orders, when you scroll to the right, you can see the information about these orders, like the top order here is our parent order. If we scroll all the way to the right, we can see the uh, client order ID, as well as our action, which we can choose to cancel the order. Now, if I cancel that parent order, we have a confirmation message, and then keep an eye on our screen, on our desktop, we can see that the orders were just canceled right now as I canceled them, okay. Now the orders do still show up here in the web-based trading panel after they've been canceled, but you can see that the order status was changed to canceled. And then after a few seconds, they did disappear by themselves without having to refresh a page. The next thing we can talk about is flattening a trade. Where it says current positions here, you can see that there are no positions in the account. That's why it says no data available. If you had an open position, you would see the position right there and you would scroll to the absolute right side of that and then at the very end, you would see the option to flatten the position. And it's just one button, the same as it was for canceling an order. And again, it's going to give you a confirmation window before you flatten it. You can also enter orders from this web-based trading panel. All right, that's gonna cover the web-based trading panel for now. You definitely wanna get into the habit of logging into the web-based trading panel on another device before you begin your trading session. That would be a good habit to start to develop. The next thing to understand is that the trading servers are independent of the market data servers with Sierra Chart. So if you are using the Teton order routing service with the Denali exchange data feed for the market data, if you're experiencing an issue with the market data, most probably you will still be able to submit and cancel orders because the servers are independent. There might be an issue with the market data but it will not affect the trading servers. And the opposite is also true. If you are having an issue with order routing, it will not be apparent in the market data because again, they're on separate servers. They're independent of one another. So in the event of a market data issue, this will not impact trading. The next thing we can talk about is in the event of an order that could not be canceled or it appears that an order is freezing or the status is not up to date, like for example, you have an order here, then you tried to cancel it, and then it says pending cancel, and it looks as if it's frozen. One thing you can do with this is select trade and then select refresh trade data from service. And normally that will fix it. But normally, again, this should not need to be used. This should not happen. It's very rare to happen. Another thing you can do is disconnect and reconnect to the data feed, which would also disconnect and reconnect to the trading server, which hopefully would uh, resolve any orders that were um, in a frozen state. The next issue you might run into is insufficient margin for a trading position. So if we select trade and go to the trade account monitor and balances window, here we have the ability to see information about our trading account. Now there are different ways to determine the margin requirement in our account. Um, this field right here, margin requirement, is going to change depending on how many open orders and open positions you have in the account. So you should always keep an eye on that amount. This amount should never exceed your available funds because that means you do not have any more margin left to trade with. I will show you two different methods for determining the margin requirement for any particular contract you want to trade using the Teton order routing service. The first method is gonna be submitting a test order and then making reference to this field right here. And this is going to tell you your margin requirement for every contract um, you submit as an order. And then the next way to look at your margin requirements for each contract is by selecting your trade account and then going to manage and edit trade account. 
and then you'll be brought to the settings window and you have to select the margin tab. When you select the margin tab here, in the first field, you can type in the symbol that you want to determine the margin for. In this case, I will type in the symbol for the S&P 500 futures, and then I will request the margin data. So here we can see our exchange margin and we can see the account margin. So this is the margin that our broker has set for us for this contract. And this field right here is gonna reflect your actual margin requirement currently based on the positions and open orders that you have in your account. Okay, that concludes part two of potential trading issues and solutions. Please join us for part three and see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.